Okay, welcome. Um, I'm using a microphone because this session is being live streamed, which means it's being shown on the internet so people can, who are not here tonight with us and join our, this light dinner, um, can also uh, give us their feedback. Um, I want to thank you for making your time today in this cold winter day. <laughs> Uh, my name is Lisa Rodriguez, and I'm with AARP here locally in San Antonio, and I, it's a pleasure to be with you here in the community at St. Vincent de Paul Catholic Church. Uh, for those of you who maybe come to church here or just live nearby, I welcome you. Um, today we're going to be, we're here in the community to really get your input. We're going to be speaking first and foremost about a designation that San Antonio has received. And that designation is called an age-friendly designation. What does it mean to be an age-friendly city, an age-friendly community? So you're going to hear about that today. And then it, myself, my colleague Joe Sanchez, and also our executive, our executive council member Julia Castaneda Hoyt, uh, along with uh, Gloria Davila, some, uh, she's also a lead volunteer for us. Uh, we'll be having a discussion with you around what do you think makes San Antonio can make San Antonio an even better city. But before that, we want to give you some context as to what an age-friendly age city is, what it can be, and perhaps maybe where San Antonio is at the currently, and particularly for those that are 50 plus. As many of you all know, AARP is a membership organization, but we're a membership organization that starts at 50. A lot of people don't know that. They think it's 60, you know, 65, uh, but it's not. It's 50. And so um, this designation affects everybody, not just people who are 50 plus, but their families as well. I'm sure many of you have uh, relatives, friends, grandchildren, and a lot of other younger people in your lives. So again, this designation is about everyone in the city. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our executive council member, Julia Castaneda Hoyt, who's going to begin covering our presentation. And again, throughout this presentation, if you have questions, you have remarks, please just let us know. And we want to make sure, because this is a, a two-way street, we want to hear from you. Julia? Oh, okay. Hi. As Lisa said, I'm Julia Castellano Hoyt. And I have been an AARP volunteer for a little bit more than 13 years, going on 14 years. I have enjoyed every moment of being an AARP volunteer, and you will find that a lot of the work that gets done with AARP is done by volunteers. We are very proud, as Lisa said, that the mayor signed the resolution that made our city an age-friendly community. We are one of eight communities in Texas that have now been declared age-friendly. What do we mean by age-friendly? By that, go ahead, go to that. We are experiencing a profound change in this country in terms of our population. Our population is aging. As you can tell, every day 10,000 people in this country turn 65. That's that has a lot of implications because what? The workforce is going to be retiring. The younger folks aren't having as many children as perhaps our parents did. And in 15 years, 2030, 2030, it sounds like it's a long time, but it's not. In 15 years, the United States is going to have twice as many people age 65 and over. So we are going to be the in group, all of us 65 and over. We are going to be the majority, bet on that. And what does that say about cities? What does that say about infrastructure, housing? It's going to involve so many things in this country. It's going to change things. Survey after survey finds that all older adults would like to remain in their homes. How many of you would like to remain in your home? Obviously. <laughs> Yes, 
Unfortunately, for many of us, that is not always possible. If we have a two-story house, we can't climb up the stairs anymore. If we have bathrooms that are too small to get a wheelchair in, that's another issue. How far is it to the nearest drugstore? Most of us over 65 are on medications, and we know that. And drugstores, I think in this city, there's only one or two drugstores that will actually deliver your medicines to your house. There's many implications, many issues. In fact, most houses, as we talked a little bit earlier, have not been designed to adapt. Americans' homes have been traditionally built and designed for folks 35 and younger. So it's not just our homes, but a lot of homes that are going to have to be modified. Survey after survey finds that older adults want to stay in their community. We don't want to leave. We don't want to move across country. But you know what's happening? Is many of us have kids that don't live near us anymore. Many of us have children in California, and I have a grandson in Georgia. It's not the way it used to be, where we stayed close to family. So that is going to also impact this whole bunch of people that are going to be turning 65. 85% of adults plus 45 in age agree with the statement, what I'd really like to do is stay in my current community for as long as possible. And that's understandable. You know your friends, your neighbors, you don't want to move. Another thing is for the past 15, 50 years, community have developed around what? Cars and getting around. And what happens when we get to be around 70, 75? Our reflexes aren't what they used to be. And if you're like me, my poor, I do not drive anymore. My poor husband who's sitting over there has to drive me everywhere I go. And I am, and I'll admit it, the world's worst backseat driver. <laughs> you're going to fast, slow down. Use your turn signals. <laughs> See that truck? Yes, I see the truck. So I'm not the only one, right, ladies? But what has happened? Okay, this whole, our whole universe revolves around cars and motor vehicles as our principal form of transportation. And then will need to be addressed. I think that's my last one, right? Okay. Joe, you have a point? drive uh, vehicles it's driven automatically without a driver you program it and take shit it's been tested in california and, and i'm sure that's the wave of the future but i don't think you could pay me to get into one of those. <laughs> 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 to, that is not the aarp position that's my position thank you thank you julia and thank you all again for coming out uh, you know, I'm still cold, so I have my jacket on, so I apologize for that. And I'm drinking the iced tea. But anyway, Julia was talking about a livable community. So, you know, what are some of the things that make a community livable? You know, a livable community is a community that has affordable and appropriate housing, supportive community services, adequate mobility options, which all these together facilitate personal independence and engagement of residents in civic and social life, which is really important for everyone in our community. You know, some of the related initiatives you know, include combating isolation and providing resources to, and support to caregivers, encouraging social inclusion through volunteerism, and you know, ARP is always looking for volunteers, so if you want to volunteer, make sure you let us know before, you, before we all leave here demonstrating respect for cultural and ethnic diversity, and promoting the use of personal technology. I don't know if any of you all have had the opportunity to participate in any of our tech events, technology, education, knowledge, which is the information we provide 
on smartphones and tablets uh, to be able to get you to be able to use them a lot more. Uh, I hope you all have been able to participate in that. So you know, why is ARP creating a network of age-friendly communities? The ARP network of age-friendly communities encourages communities like San Antonio to prepare for the rapid aging of the U.S. population by paying increased and special attention to the environmental, economic, and social factors that influence the health and well-being of older people, but not only of older people, but of people of all ages. This network serves as a catalyst to educate, encourage, promote, and recognize improvements that make communities more supportive, not only for their older residents, but as I said, for people of all ages. Um, so what are the eight, dom we have eight domains. Uh, oh, no, yeah, you did, but it's okay. No, it's okay. Uh, so, you know, th there are eight domains, as you can see on, on, on uh, the screen. You know, the eight domains are, are in two different sections. One is the built environment, and the other one is the social environment. Uh, the first is outdoor spaces and buildings. This is accessibility and availability to recreational facilities. That's the first one. And these are not in any special order. Uh, transportation safe and affordable modes of private and public transportation. Housing, we want a wide range of housing options for older residents aging in place, as Julia said, and other home modification programs. We have social participation, which is access to leisure and cultural activities, opportunities for older residents to participate in social and civic engagement with, their, with other peers, younger people and older people respect and social inclusion, which are programs to support and promote ethnic and cultural diversity, along with programs to encourage multi-generational interaction and dialogue. We're looking for civic participation and employment, promotion for paid and volunteer activities for older residents and opportunities to engage in the formulation of policies relevant to their lives. We want to be able to have a voice in what's going on in our community. Communication and information, promotion of and access to the use of technology to keep older residents connected to their community, friends and family, both near and far. And the eighth, uh, one of the eight domains is community support and health services, access to home care services, clinics and programs to promote wellness and active aging. You know, these domains, you know, have much in common with ARP's policies and initiative, particularly those that contribute to our definition of a livable community. Um, that's all I have, Lisa, or you? Yeah. Any questions on any of those? Well, what are we doing about sure. We're talk about that right yeah. now. Well, yes, ma'am. When you were speaking, sir, you went, and I didn't know what was one, uh, what was two, three, four, five, six, seven. That, that's okay. You, you have a booklet in your, I'm sorry, in your uh, tote bag or in your recyclable bag. <laughs> and in that, in that booklet, uh, did you, if you didn't get it, we'll get it for you. We have some at the, and in that booklet, and we apologize for that, but in that booklet, you'll have the eight domains of livability. And we can go back to that slide um, if you wish. Okay, we'll get you one, we'll get you one. We have one, it's Gloria, we'll get one. Go back real quick, real quick, go back one, yeah. So we'll go back to that, and again, this is, sort of, this is a framework that the age-friendly community cons uh, framework, it's a framework in which the age-friendly designation works from. So in other words, when we were putting this together, AARP and the World Health Organization, they carefully studied what what, is it gonna, what, what does it take to have a really good quality of life? And if you look at these, they're really no different if you're familiar with the San Antonio 2020 plan. Because most plans, and particularly when you're, as you're planning for your city going forward for people to have good quality of life, it really is inclusive of these categories. So what I'm saying is if you look at the SA 2020 plan, you look at the age-friendly plan, they really do complement one another very, very well. However, the difference between what we're proposing, well, 
between this, it's not a proposal anymore, it is, it is, it is reality. The difference between SA 2020 and age friendly, if there was a difference, is just that we are focused on the 50 plus population and their families. Again, it includes ch children, right? Because you, like I said, you have relatives, you have younger children, you have grandbabies, whatnot, or you babysit someone perhaps. Um, anyhow, you have, we just have a focus in that particular age group. And because of our expertise, ARP's expertise in working with older populations, um, it's something that we thought would be really beneficial to San Antonio and, as Julia had mentioned, eight, seven other communities in Texas. And I, we wish we could have everybody be part of the network. So some of the benefits, and we're still talking about what are the benefits? Why would we want to be part of this ARP network of age-friendly communities? When you're organized and you have a framework you can speak with and you get the pulse of the community and you have statements from the community, it's really easier to get things, to make a change, if you will. So for example, in this particular center, where the center sits, Councilman Ray Saldana is the councilman of this particular district, which by the way, he was present when, the city, when it was announced the city was becoming age friendly. Um, he, it would be good if we went to him, right? Let's just say some of his residents felt, well, we want, and I'm just making this up. <laughs> we want a park where we could, you know, the lights are on at six in the morning and we can walk and we can be safe and we want something that's close to where we live. We don't want to have to travel 20 miles to go to a really nice park. That's an example. Well, okay, why are you saying that? Well, this is why we're saying that. We're saying this because in order for us to be age friendly and to live up to that, we must have places where we can age in place and exercise for health, health reasons. So again, it gives you a, this organizing around age friendly really gives you an opportunity to perhaps change. And that was just you know, a very small example of, of, of so many things that are possible. Um, there's also a connection to global na national work networks, age friendly communities that's just not San Antonio, that's just not in Texas. We're gonna give you a list of other communities that are part of this network. So all of a sudden now you're speaking about the New Yorks of the world and you're looking at Washington DC. They are too, some of those communities are age friendly. And through them we work back and forth as what's going on there, what worked there, what ordinance that you passed that helped you know, older communities, maybe that's something we could utilize here, vice versa. What did San Antonio do? Yeah, maybe some of you are aware that San Antonio has a complete streets ordinance. And what that means, and it, it, it was enforced in 20, it was adopted in 2011, I believe enforced in 2011 as well, in September 2011. Uh, what that means is that going forward, people, and particularly developers, must build sidewalks a little bit wider than they were. They must actually look at building and incorporating the citizen and incorporating the pet, making sure that there's places that, you know, it's not all about just where to park the car. So that complete streets ordinance is very helpful. That's just to give you another example. That's, that's one little thing. Um, we also have access to news, information, and guidance, best practices, and research. You know, for example, a third of San Antonio's population is 50 plus. When we brought this to the mayor and we asked for his input, surely we said this is complimentary to SA 2020. And this is Mayor Castro before he left. But we also said, did you know that San Antonio, a third of San Antonio is 50 plus? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a huge piece of the population. That's why it's important, we said, to ensure that San Antonio was on this path. Um, opportunities for partnership with other communities, like we just mentioned, uh, whether it's in New York, whether it's in Atlanta, it's in Atlanta, Georgia, or other places in the country that might have a similar problem than we, that we do. Maybe there's a, you know, lack of, uh, of, of adequate transportation. I'm not suggesting that's the key. That's just an example that that is the issue. Um, and we also get recognition by AARP, which is a national organization, but also the World Health Organization. And that there's a commitment because we have this designation that the city is committed to ensure that the 50 plus population has a voice. So some, some of the criteria for membership, and we explained, and, we, and this will tell you a little bit where we're at in the process. First and foremost, when a community wants to become an age-friendly community, it's just not ARP saying, okay, we're age-friendly. <laughs> not at all. The city leader actually has to write a letter to ARP requesting that the city 
become age friendly. And then in that letter, they state a promise. And that letter was written back in March of 2014, this year, by then Mayor Castro, who in turn sent it to our director, our ARP Texas director, Bob Jackson, and asked that San Antonio be considered and listed some accomplishments, but also listed a promise to ensure that there was a group made of 50 plusers that would come together, write a plan, and that it would be presented to sit to the city council for consideration going forward of what it would take to make San Antonio an even better city to become, to continue age friendliness. So there was a commitment, a group, a group of folks that might be interested in continuing to ensure, how, in other words, making sure that the city is definitely being age friendly. And it's not just the city of San Antonio like this, you know, this, the city organization, it's also partners, it's also neighborhood groups, churches. It's, when we say the city, we mean the, all the people in the city, the partners. Go ahead. The member list, this is just to give you an example. These are not all our members. We have actually been, uh, I believe we're to 38 communities now, but this is just to give you an example of different states and some of those cities that are designated age friendly. That doesn't mean their job is done, by all means. That means they're committed to making some changes that's going to help people 50 plus. So there you have it. In Texas, of course, we listed San Antonio, but just to give you um, just an idea, Houston just became age friendly, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, Brownsville, Austin was the first city, I'll have to say, um, and then San Antonio and El Paso is very close. So just to kind of give you a, a, an idea. So again, we didn't really tell you, you know, what is it we're gonna do because it's not us, it's y'all that have to, we're, we're seeking input as to what you would think would help make this city an even better city to live in. And particularly from our perspective of a 50 pluser. And if you're not 50, that's okay, we still wanna hear from you. But here, if you wanted to learn more, <laughs> there's a website, AARP, dot org slash livable we'll go back there yeah uh go to from beginning yeah no, there you go Joe. okay that's good enough um you can go to arp.org forward slash age friendly if you don't have a computer not a problem that's why you have your booklets and then you could also go to arp.org slash San Antonio because on the San Antonio site, you can link, we're going to make sure you can link to the age friendly site. But also, if we have a discussion here, and let's just say there's something, you know, I don't know, there's one, one or two things that is kind of a consensus that might be an issue that we could address. We're going to try to get you some information on our website so that you'll know, okay, what happened after that meeting we talked about, let's just say sidewalks. Well, we're going to go back onto our website and we're going to have some information about issues that you brought up here tonight. And really this part, I'm going to turn over to Gloria Davila. Some of you might recognize her from the commercial. She is, uh, she's, she's a movie star. and We created a star. Um, she's going to lead up a conversation because she really would like to hear about what you think we could do to make San Antonio even better. We'll get you one. We'll get you one right now. I'll go get you one right now. Well, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? <coughs> Who else needs a, a booklet? Thank you so much, Dia. Again, my name is Gloria Davila. I've been an AARP volunteer for about five years, and um, I really, really have a lot of fun being an AARP volunteer because I get to go out and meet wonderful people like you. I get to talk to you and visit you and find out what your issues are. And so that's one of the things that, that we're gonna do tonight during my section. Th th this is the fun part for me. Uh, it's a lot of fun to talk to you and to listen to you and have a community conversation with you. So just think of the uh, uh, eight domains of livability. You have them in your, in your little booklet. And when you start looking at all of those, those are things that, those are the improvements that we want in those sections because we're getting older. Um, I'm a baby boomer. How many of you are baby boomers? 
And so that means that we were born from 1946 on to about 1964. So we baby boomers are taking over the, the, the nation pretty soon. We're almost. We have a lot of power in, our, in, in, in the uh, uh, baby boomer generation. But anyway, those eight domains of livability that they're called, <coughs> those are things that are very important to us. Uh, for example, you heard about the outdoor spaces and buildings. How many of you have to um, go to a park for Easter or for um, July 4th and then you find that it's not very good for people our age? We might fall. I know that uh, my husband, my husband Alex Davila, he's been a volunteer for about 22 years and he used to be able to get around very, very well, but now we have to be careful of the sidewalks. We have to be careful where you cross the street, the curbs. We have to be careful where those barriers are, where you park. We have to be careful because he may fall easily. And that's what's happening to a lot of uh, uh, our senior citizens. So think of a way, think of something that has happened to you or to your, your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, where we need to improve these outdoor spaces and buildings. I mean, can you go out to the parks just like that? Some parks you can't. So think about that, because I'm going to ask you for examples of places where we can improve this particular section. Transportation. How many of you ride the bus? A few of us ride the bus. Most of us don't. However, what are some of the things that you face when you have to ride the bus? Think about that. And then, and then in a little bit when I ask you for examples, then you can tell us what kind of barriers you face. Because it, it's just uh, uh, something that we have to live with every day. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh -huh. onto the bus, and it's uh, my mother broke her wrist. Oh my Getting gosh. on a bus, and, and uh, it didn't come down far oh, yeah. enough. Mm -hmm. She's very short. And, mm -hmm. and she broke her wrist. Wow. She so that's out. that's one a very good example. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that Julia was talking about is that is housing. Mm -hmm. What kind of housing do we need? Well. Some of us need very special kinds of housing. Uh, we, we, my husband and I sold our house that was two-story because his knees couldn't go upstairs anymore. And pretty soon I'm not going to be able to you know, go up the stairs either. So that is one example, the housing. We, I want to age in place. I'll be very frank, I'm 67. And ever since I turned 50, I know that I've been suffering from some form of arthritis. I think we all do. And so what are the things that uh, an age-friendly city like San Antonio can do for us? So think about that, and I'm going to ask you a question about that. Uh, civic participation and employment, whatever it is that, that you're getting out to, to cultural events, cultural activities, all different kinds of city events, what kind of barriers do you face? So what, would, what do you think would make that a better place for you. Wherever it is you go, whatever people that you deal with, where any events, any activities, movies where you go, just think about that. Because that's what is important to us. That's what they're talking about, the eight domains of livability. Those are the things that we face as we go out in San Antonio. Uh, the, there's, I think there's one more, <coughs> which I think AARP is doing a lot about, and that is the uh, um, Technology. I think Joe just came from, from one of those technology workshops at the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center. And it is an excellent, very professional workshop in technology. So if you see that on the, on the website, sign up for it because they have a little, a, a small table and they have the teacher up front and they have the techie right here in front of you and so you sit there and if you don't understand they're right there to tell you so think about how what kind of of age-friendly community could do for you in regard to technology so think about all those things because 
As a volunteer, as a volunteer, I go out and meet hundreds of people, and especially <laughs> with this ad, this TV ad that, that I was asked to do, I get to meet a lot of people, and many of them have concerns and issues. And I'll never forget, I'll give you an example of one person that came that lives in a part of town where every time that it rains a lot, there is a flood. And they can't get out or they can't get in and they have to wait for the city to do something. They're still waiting, some of them. So that's an example. Housing, how do we, how do we face that in an age-friendly uh, uh, community? There was another one that um, lived on a part of town that did not have very quick and efficient access to health care. For those of you that don't drive or that need to depend on somebody else, how far do you have to go? That's one of the, th one of the uh, uh, factors here in the uh, age-friendly community, the livable community. So think about all those things because that's why we're here tonight. We explain to you exactly what we're talking about, what AARP is partnering with the city of San Antonio to improve all these indicators. And so now that we're here, and I hope that you've <coughs> understood what it is that we're trying to do, that you st start thinking about your example. Tell us what is going to make your neighborhoods, your communities, a better place to live. So does anyone have an, another example? Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, I'm, I'm running with your example of the park. Uh, there's a park right outside my door. However, I can't walk very, for very long sit down mm -hmm. and then walk again and right. sit down. So there isn't enough seating. There isn't any seating oh, in I the see. park. Yeah. There's some in the, the play area where only children are allowed, but not adults. And then again, there's no even, no shade at all. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, so, and the walking trail is enough for people to pass. But if I'm with my husband and he needs help walking, um, we have to dodge the runner coming the other way. Oh my gosh, yes. So to improve those barriers, you would want wider, wider walking trail, uh huh, and more benches to sit on, yes. and probably shade. some trees for yes. some shade, oh, yeah. especially well, during the summer. Yeah. Okay, water fountains. Do you, yeah. water, 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 do you want to tell us which park it is, or, or not? And well, then you don't have to cross the highway. Okay, but do you know the name of the park? Stablewood. Yes. Um, park. Okay. Uh, this gentleman had yeah. his hand up earlier. Uh, about technology, these technology classes, I was trying to enroll in one back in the summer. Anyway, there's such a high demand mm -hmm. uh, to get in, in these classes, and and I have already called AARP about it, that I think they need to, especially for people who do have some knowledge, technology like a computer, mm -hmm. to have these things offered where you can take it online as well. That way it will lessen the demand of having yeah. people sure. be in class. Plus you don't have to travel exactly. to wherever it is that they're offering the workshop, I see. We are developing that, and that is going to be something that you'll be able to get access to. So we are working on that right now. Yes. The library has a free program for anybody that wants to learn computers or iPad, free, for three hours every other day. Is it a one-time thing? That you go for one time or you can go more than once? Like for instance, I went for three weeks. Oh my I have to stop going because I had to go to the doctor and interfere. So I stopped and now I'm going back. It's all the time. They have a young lady there that teaches computers. Her name is Monica. Monica. And she's wonderful. And the is that, is that it? all the libraries or just one library? Twelve months of the year. Just one and that's great information. Well, I don't know if it is one library or not, but it's the, the, the library of San Antonio. Oh, is the one that is... Uh, downtown? The, John, no, Johnson Library. Johnson's library. Johnson's. It is a branch. Yeah. Yeah. It is yeah. a branch. And that's some information, too, that we can post on our website for those who may be interested, like the San Antonio, uh, ARP.org forward slash, or slash San Antonio. We could 
possibly put that information for you there so that you know where there's some additional classes for you to attend. So the San Antonio Public Library. So and also they that. have a program especially for children. Uh -huh. After the school children, the mother brings them and leaves them there and they teach them computer and research and think, oh, they are wonderful. Just wonderful. Good, good. I experienced it firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. Well, they, my grandson gave me an iPad, and when I saw it, I said, this is Chinese to me. <laughs> can you use it now? Can you use it? You can. And then I took it to the young lady, and I said, do you know anything about this? Yes, yeah. she said, sit down, Mrs. Nurse. Her son taught me. Oh my gosh. The yeah. little boy came and says, I help you. And <laughs> 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 what was he, 14, 15? Yeah. yeah, I was very happy. I was from 5 o'clock in the evening to 7. Every Good other for day. You. Good for and, you. and how far is that library branch from where you live? Right. How far did you she have has to? to? She has to be in a car. She yeah. has to be in it's a car. You can't there. walk. Okay, can no, walk I cannot you? walk because okay. it's too far. Tony, I am 89. I'm not a spring chicken. <laughs> <laughs> that, and there's no good way to walk. You can yeah. walk <laughs> at this road at 410 to get there. Or, or uh, going, uh, what is it, Ray Allison? Yeah. And you well, have I your life in your hands. I'll right. tell you what, I hope that when I'm 89, I'm as spry and as talkative and, and, and good looking as you, because uh, that, that is great. That's a good, good uh, uh, age to be. I think this yeah. lady had her hand up. We're talking about going to the library. You can get a ride with Mia to a doctor or whatever else, but going to a library or something that is not you know, designated like medical, they don't take you in, they, they don't pick you up. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, some of the resources that you have, you can get to it, you can drive it. You are in the library that I went because you told me you are no kosher, you ain't got an ID, remember? No, 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 no. <laughs> Anyone else have any examples? So think of your communities in regard to these eight indicators here. Uh, what would improve your community? Yes, ma'am. Uh, a comment regarding the technology class that the ARP uh, has. Mm -hmm. Maybe have them in different areas of the city, so everybody, for me, would be kind of to the okay. Uh -huh. yeah, we offer, right now we offer the two sites at the Pearl Brewery and at the Guadalupe. And for 2015, we are working on different sites uh, to be able to provide you know access to people in different parts of the city. Thank you. Very good. Yes. Is there a program to help either pay or a whole or a portion of adding chairlifts to two story houses? I think that would be the city. I don't know. I know ARP. Yeah, I know, I know the, the chair the VA <coughs> does. Better. Like, I know the VA, I believe, has a program. Again, if someone here is a veteran, they could probably stick to it more than I can. But I had an uncle, and that was the case, that so they did provide that. Other than that, I'm not sure. I don't know if Medicare and mm -hmm. they provide that. So. Mm -hmm. And we maybe can, if the city can come up with something to assist. Share of this. Okay. Yes, ma'am. How oh, can one um, get um, schedules of all the routes in San Antonio? Because when I want to go somewhere, I have no idea how to get there, and I can't drive. Okay, and you mean, are you talking about the bus routes? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That would be... You can get online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, have, do you have access to a computer? Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, there's also, Metro Media has a, a map of all of the bus routes. And they, uh, you can go to uh, in the VIA uh, Center on San Pedro, Chicago. And I think where they have a phone number that you can call. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I don't, you can call and say, I have to get from. Uh, but would they send me all the. I bet you they would. Okay. But, but if you, for that particular place that you have to go, you can say, This is where I live, yeah. and how do I got, get to that next place? I, I, I understand that they're pretty good about that. Mm -hmm. How many of you have done that? But also, you, go can, online. you can do it yourself uh, by going through. 
uh, VIA's website, www.viainfo.net, and then you enter where your starting point is and and where you want to get to, and it will give you directions as of what buses to take and to get there. Oh, I see. Uh, it's www.viainfo.net. And we'll, we'll, we can also post that on our website um, to just make sure you get the link. In other words, we'll have their community conversation. And again, I'm looking at my, and she just walked out, but I'm looking at my colleague Nicole Macias because she can post something as a follow-up of what the things we spoke about today. And so via being that there's some interest, we can put, you can give that link. So you can have it on Yes. I have a, a question on this area, particularly this area, we have a lot of churches down the road. I saw that. But and but we don't have a place to walk. If if you would like to walk, we have access to go in the base. My husband and I and we walk inside. But I feel okay, but he was military, but I see them running and doing all these kind of things. And I feel like I better Later on. So there aren't any walking trails. No. Yes, well they have sidewalks, yes. And they have an area where you can only walk. The ones in the middle, they can, you know, kind of uh, run a little bit. And the end, they can run. But I'm saying here, in here, we don't have a place to walk. And we don't have sidewalks. <coughs> and so is there a nearby park? No. no. Just that one over there. That, yeah, uh, that's very small. Yeah. At the highway, you would have to go and get in the car. There's exactly. a park down here on Bray Ellison, too, but it's not very accessible when it's dark at night. Accessibility parks. Yeah. Another issue I'll I mean, bring out to be sort of like this area right here. Uh, you talk about sidewalks, but also in the evenings or in the mornings, the lighting is. Really I've heard about lighting. Yeah. I would let my wax walk for this morning. I have a question. When y'all mention lack of accessibility, what do y'all mean to the parks? Like you can't get to them, or you have to go, you know, a long way to get to them. What do y'all? Are you speaking? Yeah. Anybody who said? Oh. Yeah. You know what? There's no parks around here. Don't they here to grow, you know, to grow. Uh, well, the street and that you said. You okay. would need a car. You would need a car to get there. Yeah. You need a car. need a car to get there. I mean, it's not anything yeah. with a right. well, <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's really important. Um, of course, with parks, the realization that you need space, and so you're probably kept out of the area. But that doesn't mean that you can't keep trying. You can't keep looking for those opportunities. And then another thing is like, is everybody aware of where there is a park? I know sometimes I'm driving. And you see a park, like in a neighborhood, and you're like, oh, I didn't know that was there. So maybe there are some opportunities for us to give you information about what parks are available, but not to stop there. Maybe that's also an opportunity to talk to your representative about maybe future plans that we, we don't know of, right? Because bonds are passed uh, on a, every four, four years, and I guess more in District 4 had a park. Now, how accessible is that to some of you? I'm not sure. I want to say it was on the other side of Ray Ellison. Yeah. So there, there was a high pool where it used to be up to years ago. Yeah. It's been unutilized for. So there, there might be an opportunity. Was there's there's yeah. a high pool. opportunity there. It's been unutilized okay. for almost in. 30 some odd years. Yeah. But, but if you do have a park, you know, maybe they'll put a bus stop there. I mean, so you can just get to the park. But none of the if parks you do have a park, to have a bus stop there so that people can. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that's good to hear. We wrote that down because see, these are real issues that we could take to the council you know, that and, and speak to him or her about. You know, this is what the community said. They actually have, you know, they're, they're actually inquiring about a prospective area. This is the kind of stuff that these discussions really contribute to. So I wrote that down, and that's a really good point because these notes that we're making, Joe and I, these are notes that we're taking to city council. So we're going to be able to say, Councilman Ray Saldana, this is what people in your in your community said. You know, and even if you don't live here, don't worry, because we've got comments for District Three, District, and we're, we're fixing all District Two, but we've got comments for six, seven, eight, and we're going to keep going. So.
So just, and, and this won't be the only time that you'll, you'll have the opportunity for input. But this is all being fed to our age-friendly plan. Go ahead, Gordon. Uh, yes, ma'am. You have your hand up? I'll, I'll kind of pertain to uh, what Rachel done. He should know about the Old Valley High Park. Where the he should know about it. To be. That, that area has been open. Uh, no. Are you talking about the pool or the park? It used to be the a park. park. It used to be a park. It used to be a park. It's the whole filled. area it's is filled. not it's utilized. Beautiful park. I don't. I'm, I'm sure the pool was not there when Soldania was uh, the councilman, but somebody should know about it. But it's been here. I've been here 50 years, and it was there when we came. Yes, ma'am. You know they have a park over here in Rainbow Hill area which is on the other side of 90. In that community, they have a very nice little uh, community deal. They have the trail deals that you can walk. They have the pavilion where the kids can play basketball. It's very, very nice. And I always see people there walking and the kids are playing. And you live close by? No, I live over here. It's oh, where I'm Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> way over there. But I go through there and I see it and I'm going like, how can they build this one over here? Where the people can and the kids because the kids are out in the street. There's no, no there is no, There's okay. nothing in this area. Nothing. We've been here. I've been here forty something years and they haven't done anything to our neighborhood. And Mr. Santana knows because I have told him before. Yes. And uh, that our sidewalks are like heck. You know, yeah. they, you can't even it. take the. Uh, you can't walk on them because they're all ugly. And my my neighbors down the street, uh, he had a stroke. And his wife wanted to take him on the, you know, on when it's sunny and whatever. But they can't because the sidewalks are so ugly, yeah. you can't do with the wheelchair. Well, they're off. And they're off right. Level. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're, they're and there's no funding to, to, to do the no. sidewalks. That's what we're told when we ask, you know, to correct the sidewalks. There's no funding to correct the sidewalks. <laughs> well, I don't know why they did it. In the corner where I live, they did a, a, a deal for a handicap. Yeah. yeah. They did but that the sidewalks on the you know, forget it. Nobody can walk through it. Or so that was money uh, spent without nothing. I told the guys, are y'all going to make the sidewalk? They said, oh, no, we're just going to do the view. Nobody uses it. They can't. Well, there's a few that use it, but then the sidewalk is no good, so it doesn't yeah. do any good. Yes, ma'am. Employment. Employment as far as getting up to date with current technology to be employed again. Yes. You know, you know, I, I we need businesses to would love to get them. back into the workforce because I've still got a lot of brain in me, <laughs> but there's nobody hiring. You know? Yeah, that's a And are there, there are these, all these customer service yeah. places that are an abundance, which I've got 30 years of, because I may not be as fast as the 25 year old one, they're going to hire them first before me. So that's a very big disadvantage. Yeah. You know, I've got the experience, but they don't want to hire me. You know, so where is the, where is ARAP going to do for this for <laughs> us to be retrained, or is there a program out there for us to get, to go to? You know, and also if there are employment centers that can cater to that age group that we're discussing now in this vicinity or in a, in each district. Or do we always have to go downtown, which is, you know, <laughs> at our age, we want to, we don't want to go through that, you know. And, and how many buses do you have to change? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's this yeah. lady had her hand up. Yeah, I have gone to um, interviews and everything, and um, they keep saying, oh, you're overqualified, which means you're too old. <laughs> yeah, right. And I keep saying, hey, I've got work ethics that would put these young people to shame. I bet. Because mm -hmm. they come when they want to. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, I just wanted to say back to the real, really good, the career career transitions, or um, first of all, in our, you have, hopefully you have one of these in your back, which is a choir, and on there, we have listed a career transitions workshop. And actually, uh, Nicole Macias is going to be leading it for us in partnership with uh, with, uh, with another partner that's going to talk about what does it take, what, what do people from a, 
what are people looking for? What are those buzzwords, right? You always have to match what the job description is to yeah. right, match your resume. And it's a lot of work. You're right. There's a lot of work in getting a job and getting work. However, um, the technology piece is important as well as you stated. You know, people on Twitter now are doing anything on Facebook, and you know, I, I'm not, I'm not. My, my sons are more savvy than I'll ever be. I don't know if I can ever catch up. But the point is, is that we are starting to at least convene partners that can help address particularly like, okay, what is a Twitter handler? Or what is you know, Facebook? And how do I get on there and post for a job? Or what is it that I should be using? It's not, it's not the same. It's changed so much. And a lot of things are happening online. Some of the tech classes addresses that, but there's so much more that we can and actually learn. So we're trying to address that. And then we also have, AARP has a list of employers that are age friendly. Age friendly. <laughs> they have they have been given or the honor of being on the list because they have hired or a big piece of their a portion a good portion of their of their employment population is 50 plus. Um, and you probably know some of those you know who they are. Uh, they are on I don't want to misspeak but they are on our uh, ARP website. But that's another way because we are being you know diligent about who's hiring the 50 plusers because you're right there's you have to really change the conversation there's actually a piece and I'm not qualified to give it but there's actually something there, there is a, um, a session in which it addresses how do you get over that overqualified piece what is your how do you change that conversation for me overqualified to be the best qualified for the job so just to let you know we are going to hopefully roll out more of that in 2015 this, uh, yeah, gentleman. one thing I want to bring up about this, I've, I've experienced some too in the same manner. I, about six months ago, had an interview for a job, and, and the guy, one, one of the interviewers, I went through about four, asked me, he said, well, do you think you can uh, stand up long term and do work? I said, of course, I do, I do it now in my current line, other line of work. Anyway, he was sort of, I could tell by the way he's asking the question, doubting. And, uh, but I think one of the things that needs to happen is to, part of the reason why this is becoming prevalent is due to weakness in age discrimination laws that's been put upon us by Supreme Court. That there's a certain provision that the it's not recognized with age discrimination that there is with others forms of discrimination. There was a case decided back in 2009, 2010, sometime back in that time frame. So until we get Congress to come in and, and reverse this decision, it's going to be this way. And you know, I think that one of the, one of the advantages uh, uh, for AARP handling this type of massive project is that we might not, just AARP by itself, might not have all the answers and might not have everything that you want to hear, but we're making our partners and we're making all communities aware of these type of barriers that we have and these types of issues because you know, I think it's very important that we have all, the, all these baby boomers getting older and everybody is retiring in, in that era, the, the, those born in that era, so that now, what are we gonna do with them? I mean, really, what are we gonna do with them in regard to housing, in regard to employment, and all those things? That's why <coughs> this project right here brings those issues to the forefront, and we can talk about them, and ARP is coming out to the community. They're, we're coming to you instead of you coming to us so that we hear what your concerns and what your issues are. And that's why I am volunteering for ARP because they are trying to help people, senior citizens in my age bracket. Uh, this lady had a You were talking about housing and um, could they do like gardening community? You know, where they would have affordable for people that, like myself, that I'm downsizing and I'm eventually going to move somewhere else right. to a smaller place. I don't need the big house, but I would like a, a comfortable 
will, sure. you know, and, and also if we have activities for the people that are there, activities for that whole uh -huh. mm -hmm. Like a little village field where everybody is. Kind of home. like a complex of right. small homes. Right. Right. Uh -huh. Safe. Yeah, where you have access to transportation and medical mm -hmm. services, mm -hmm. right. that would be the ideal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. hear you. Yeah, because I go to the nursing homes and I go to, uh, I work as a hairdresser, so I'm working right now at a retirement community. But it's kind of mm -hmm. sad because it's it's not quite the same. But it, but that is a, a, a nursing home, you said. It's uh, assisted living and nursing home, oh, and we have all three. I go to all of them, and so I see how it is. But the people there, they don't have no activities. They just day in, day out, you know. And that's why I told my daughter that I uh, don't want you to put me in. Was <laughs> <laughs> happy happy or me me either. I want to age in place in my house, one that's active. <laughs> We have one daughter in there. I to, already told her, don't you dare put me in one of those when it's uh, when I'm too old to stay by myself. Yeah. And well, I think I want to mention about what I'm looking into now for myself, since it's hard to find full-time work, is to looking into these certifications, and uh, I'm I'm trying to find a whole slew of certifications, and then go to Occupational Outlook Handbook mm -hmm. online to find out which of these uh, certifications are in high demand. And I'm going to uh, sort of put pieces together, and it's like shopping for a car, and then and uh, sort of build a base as to what would be best for me to try to go after, to get certified, and then use this as a as a ploy to try to get something working for me financially. I think that's a great idea. And, and you have access to computers? Yes, you have I've your got own my, computer. I have a computer. And you're uh, technology online. savvy. And so we not only have to worry about um, um, people like this gentleman that is pretty, pretty good in, in using a computer, but what about those that don't have access to a computer? That don't know how to use it, so I think that that issue right there is uh, is two two pronged because we have to to figure out what we can do with with both in regard and, to employment. And also, one other thing, I want to bring up something I heard on Ken's Five a few weeks back about a uh, education for old people that uh, can't afford it or and, uh, and don't want to go to classes. There's a website called www.edx.org. edx.org. www.edx.org. Anyway, there's a growing number of colleges and universities all across the world, including some here in Texas, like Rice University, mm -hmm. that uh, has uh, that education on here mm -hmm. that you can get uh, training online. and. And that's what I'm going to do with these certifications. When I decide what I want to do, I'm going to go to this web page and type it in, see who offers this. I understand. I think that's a good idea. Is there also a program that, are, that is informing the employers <coughs> about this dilemma of the aging? You know? I mean, they also have to be, I mean, we're working our hardest just to stay alive. <laughs> you know, why are we having to work extra harder to have that person on the other side of the desk to believe in us? Is there, you know, is there uh, things out there to have them know that, hey. Yeah. So, partnerships. Is it is it happening? Is it formal? That I, I'm not sure. All I can tell you is that there are opportunities. So we're an age-friendly designated city, right? So could we bring together, could ARP maybe in partnership with the chamber because the chamber is probably the place where you're going to find a lot of your business folks, right? Mm -hmm. In particularly your large businesses or larger businesses that have 
hopefully jobs to offer, to bring them and maybe grab a speaker or get someone, because we do have a center up in D.C. that works on age discrimination cases. So we have lawyers that work on that. And you don't necessarily want to be with the employers and threaten the age discrimination. By all means, you don't want to do that. But the point is to have a conversation about what a 50 plus year may bring to the table. That's it, because you don't, you know, you don't want to ever say, oh, don't hire the 18 year old because you know we all have, or don't hire the 23 year old. But what is it that a 50 plus year could bring to the table? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great, actually, that's an opportunity through our age friendly network to convene that group and get feedback and then post it and make make it open to the public. So great thought. I mean, again, this is what. This is how we start addressing some of those issues. Yes, sir. Can we get some? Oh, sorry. Um, oh, sorry. All the banks and credit uh, unions and stuff are going to uh, to where they, they don't send you statements anymore. They want you to go online. Okay? And there's people that don't have computers. They're right. senior citizens, you know. And I, went, I know I went for a long time without computers. So. You, where do you go? You go to libraries? Libraries, are, there's no privacy there for banking information, you know, trying to do banking stuff. You go to senior centers, there's no privacy there. So, yeah, there's some places so you can look at where you're going to get the privacy. There's no bank speaking. There's no bank speaking. All the banks are doing it. They're all saying, hey, yeah. we're going over there, That's we're going right. to save money. If you're left behind, right. sorry. You know that that has happened to us, and my husband is is the, the financier in our in our family, and he refuses, absolutely refuses, to do any online banking. Yep. He doesn't pay anything online, because there's so much fraud and so much hacking in your accounts, that he refuses to have an ATM card, because he he's of the old school, so he, Alex. Can you stand up, please? That's my husband back there. He's a, a World War II, Korean War veteran. <laughs> and he, yeah, sure. <laughs> He's not shy. <laughs> but he, he is of the old school. He's 85 years old. He's of the old school. Quarter and a hundred and ten. And he refuses to do any of that because you know, something like what you're talking about, that we have to have uh, computer technology or, or, or knowledge of that. So he just went through six weeks of computer um, school, computer training for the babies that, you know, want to learn about computers. But anyway, he, he uh, uh, he's one of the ones that you're talking about, that the s security services and the Frost Bank, he doesn't do anything. And you know what? He doesn't care. So he calls Frost Bank and he asks for his balance. He doesn't use a computer. He doesn't Work use over a the phone. Yeah. So just just one minute. One minute. <laughs> well, I did take a, a class in computers at Oasis, and I think I learned a little bit. Now I'm waiting for her to buy me a computer. <laughs> <laughs> I need a computer <laughs> so I can practice on. And. Uh, but you know, there's so much risk. I heard someone say that there's no privacy in doing your banking at the, at the senior centers or wherever. And there's no privacy doing it at your home either because when you do it on the computer, people can get into it and get your information out. You know, we were told that by the instructor who's been a, a computer instructor for a long time. So you gotta be very careful about doing financial business on the computer because the, the risk of having someone tap into it and get your financial information. They call that ID fraud and uh, you know all that other stuff. Yes ma'am. I was going to say, you know, would everybody you. want a fixed income for our age group? Who can afford to buy these computers or even an iPad for that? Yeah. I mean, what's the, what are the technology in the future going to be? How are they going to recognize those people that cannot afford or just don't want to change because they're fixing on the old school? I mean, I'm all for technology too, 
But it so happened I've been graceful and blessed that I can afford a computer, but there's still a lot of people out there that cannot. Uh, I can say you one know, thing, They just though. cannot. So <laughs> what are they going to be doing? They, the people have to still bank because they're getting their Social Security cut. Checks. But they have come know. down quite a bit. Yeah. You know, and I can't afford one, but you can buy one. <laughs> well, here's the thing. See, I study electronics. I have an instructor years ago that used to say this about technology. Technology is a constant evolving thing and it's constantly updating and changing. So the uh, thing is, you may have something today in electronics, but it may be outdated down the road. And, and, and it goes for many things in uh, electronics. Look at C CDs now. And uh, before we had v VCRs. And uh, so it, th this is how technology is affecting us. And as technology changes, prices of, of things that was produced in the past starts to come down. And you know, in, in regards to the to the question that that, that gentleman had about um, not having an option, not to use a computer or being online, Alex has gone to security service and he's told them, "I'm not going to do it online. You send me the bill through the slow mail." Frostbank, the same thing. He's done um, another business that he says, "I'm not going to do it online. I can't." CPS, the City Public Service Board. They wanted us to do online and they, they took away his access to uh, slow mail and he called and he says, no mail, you take that off and you send it to me slow mail. And I'm hoping that they do listen. So, but that's, that's a very good point about all these businesses that are, that are not giving you the option of, of using slow mail. Okay. Um, I have great news. You know, ARP is coming out has come out with a real is it called real pad? Real pad. Real pad, which is stuff that you can do online. It's almost like an iPad, but it doesn't cost you know a fifth of what it costs an iPad costs. So you know you can look at it online. I've seen it on and, and you may want to go ahead and get one of those. That's a paid commercial button. <laughs> The, the real pad, there was, was online, the you could, you could the real pad. Yeah, I think you can get on, you can buy it on, I think they're, they're what, 149 on. or something like that. But it's still on, you could win you one. Win one. Oh, you could win, win one. one. Yeah, you could win one. Go online, yeah. see so if you can win one, yes. Yeah. Is it still on? Is it still on? I, I, have, yeah, I have not gone back to the, yes ma'am. Yeah, I'm so used to standing yeah. up because I went to Catholic school in my life. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Rosalind Anderson, hi, and um, there's a couple of things I want to share. First of all, I was going to mention that real pad, but the question is, are there instructions to teach them how to use the real pad, and is there a phone number that they can call 1-800 to use the real pad? That's, that's really what's critical, and we need to find that out. I, I, I can almost guarantee that there is, because ARP is so concerned about technology and the people that are 50 and older being left out of the technology loop. So it's, it's really critical for ARP and that's why we're doing the tech events because we want to make sure that people are aware of the technology that's out there and how to use it. I mean, it's great to have all kinds of you know, great information, but if you don't know how to use them, I've got people that have told me they've gotten, they've had uh, iPads given to them by their, their kids and all. They're still in the boxes because they're afraid to take them out afraid to break them, they don't know how to use them, turn them off or on. You know, ARP is really committed to making sure that people you know, have access to technology. So I can almost guarantee you that there, there is some it, very useful, friend, user-friendly information. If that's true, they, everybody needs that number. One other thing as far as the real path, if anything happens to it, if it breaks, where do they send it? I think those three things need to be answered for them. In addition to that, I have another a point just off the technology question. Today at Holy Redeemer, I belong to Holy Redeemer Catholic Church, and today at Holy Redeemer, I spoke to the seniors about AARP caregivers, yeah. and 
you know, what a caregiver should expect and what you should expect if you have a caregiver. The biggest question that came up was this. So many times I'm sick and my sister is taking care of me or my daughter is taking care of me. Can they be paid? And when I said yes, they can be paid, they were shocked because these people need money. And when I explained that to them and they didn't know, and, I, and it came from an AARP presentation that I was handing out to them. So I just wanted to share that piece of information. And if there's a way for seniors to get that, I think it's real important. They need some checklist that says, you know, I, I can get funding for somebody to help me. Here's some important things that I need to have somewhere, my social security number, my insurance card, all of those things in a safe place. So if anything happens to me, my daughter knows w what to do with it. And let me tell you, I experienced this two weeks out of the month. I drive on I-10 to Houston, Texas to take care of my mother, who now is dem has dementia, and I still work, and she can't walk. But all of those things I found in AARP I put aside. So when my mother goes to the hospital, everything's in my hand. So I just wanted to share that little bit of information. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. I have, I have a comment to make about people that want, don't want to go online and pay bills. Uh, most of the time, if you have a checkbook, uh, they will uh, do deposit withdraw withdrawal from your bank account. So you don't have to go online. You don't have to do anything. That you get the bill in the mail, and they'll take it out of your bank account. So it's pretty safe. Yeah. Out of draft. Out of draft. <laughs> <laughs> my, second, my second comment is we're talking about all of this, but grocery shopping, if you cannot drive, if you can't go anywhere, you can go to the grocery store, but if you can't walk very far, you can't. Especially the new AGB, you, you know, troll around and try to find something up there. So some service that either brings, you know, where you call in the list and they'll bring it to you. And, you know, as people get older, grocery shopping is not easy. I, I thought there was a, a large store that was going to start doing grocery delivery, but we'll have to look into that. I well, think. it has also been announced recently that the U.S. Postal Service is going to get involved in that. Okay. And we're, uh, we're looking for an edge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of the things, as far as shopping goes, there's two web pages that I like going to do online shopping. One is Amazon, and the other is bizrate.com. And, and in both of these circumstances, what I'll do is uh, go go to one of these websites and if I'm looking for something I'll type in what it is and, and then see all sorts of things pop up and, and can find all sorts of bargains by doing this. That, that, that you're very savvy on the computer because otherwise it doesn't help you much at all. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And Amazon is a you know, shipping fee or $99 a year you know, membership fee before you can get anything. So it's not free. Well, I've never have signed up as a member with them, and I've had, I haven't had no problem. Anybody have any other comments or stories or examples? Again, in your booklet, this is what this is about, is really trying to figure out what are some issues that you think may, might make San Antonio an even better city? Or what is something that you identify with that you think might make San Antonio an even better city? And in your bags, you should have one of these cards. Mm -hmm. uh, some of you have already completed them, but we really want you to write down, even if it's sidewalks, even if you want to write a paragraph, whatever you think, it, this is really important stuff, and I continue to stress that because we're not just going to ignore it. Myself and my colleague, Joe, we're going we're gonna to put this together. We're going to categorize it. We want to be able to meet with the official that if, of this area and talk intelligently about what the constituents have said. And we really want it, it it's going to be utilized and it's really going to filter into the age-friendly plan that should be coming to council end of the year, early 2016. Because we have time, we have to complete that plan. We're doing these discussions all over the city, but we're also doing a phone survey. So some of you might get phone calls. Joe and I could not control who gets those phone calls. It is actually uh, a professional survey that's being, um, th that's being done out of Texas Tech University. 
And then we're going to have what they call a mail survey. So some of you will be getting that mail survey. Again, we don't choose to kind of take the universe and then they divide or how they're going to take their, their sample, they call it. But that too will tell us what people are thinking of what can make your city a better, even a better city. But right now you have an opportunity. Uh, one moment. Yes, ma'am? And then I'll come to you. Yes. I would like to mention, you know, since you all mentioned city public service, um, I went to a, a meeting, uh, a public meeting last week on uh, this uh, smart meter controversy. Uh, there were many people there who spoke up and um, were, are very concerned about having city public service install a smart meter on their home. I personally had one and I asked for them to remove it about two months ago. Uh, there have been people who have reported. Uh, some of the, the, um, the people attending were also like electrical engineers, so forth, so they had the uh, the means to measure the electromagnetic radiation that emanates from that, and they're, they're concerned about the high, the high voltage from that. Uh, also, apparently, there was a comment that City Public Service plans to do this for San Antonio, and it's, really it's done all over the United States, and it's global. And uh, there's a, a lot of concern about the energy grid control. So that it behooves us to to inform ourselves as to what these options are and whether we have any. Now, according to um, what was said, and please, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt until you read it or hear it yourself. But that city public service is going to require this, and if we do not agree, then they will charge us twenty dollars per month so that they can send someone to read the meter. Um, so that's a that's a concern I feel for seniors also that's as to because of the energy so forth. Now what I experienced was that when I would turn it off at a certain time they would turn it back on and I would turn it off again. So it's just something to to so inform ourselves on. We I, yeah, I have an additional comment on that. Yeah, ARP was concerned about smart meters some years ago and it, it and it was also about the health issues, but something that really is important, you know, Alex mentioned that he doesn't like to get online and do stuff. You know, with these smart meters, you know, one of the things that they do is they keep track of everything you do. They know when you wake up, when you turn your TV on, what channels you're watching. The concern that ARP has had is that a lot of older people are very trusting. And so, let's say that I, as Joe, have a company, and I send you something saying, you know what, I want to save you some more money because you have a smart meter and now you know what you're spending your money on. So let me sell you some really great light bulbs. And so what you do is just like when we have, get on the computer, I do it all the time. When you agree to you know, these things you know, on the computer so you can get the app. People don't read, they just say, I agree. Once you agree, then, then you know, you're in for life, quite frankly. And so what, what happens with these smart meters is you know, I would get a contract with you saying you agreed to buy this light bulb at five cents and you're going to save a hundred dollars in the first month. And so what happens is that information then is not controlled. It's, it's given out to people. Anybody can buy that information. And so they would know what time you're home, when you get up, when you leave, and what you do. And also it would provide somebody the opportunity to come in and steal from you, rob you, or, or do whatever they want to because they get that information. It's because the Public Utility Commission is not controlling this information. Once you give that, they're okay, then anybody can have it. So that's one of the major concerns that ARP has had on that. And a privacy issue. We, privacy. Have, we have, in our house, we have a smart meter. And we control it. I don't care if I have to change that thing 10 times a day. And Alex does. And so with that, that little smart meter, you can manually change everything. And um, I programmed it, programmed it on the computer at, uh, at 7 o'clock during the, during the heat, heat part of the year. Uh, I have it at 80. But when it's really, really hot, and I think that the, the usage of electricity in San Antonio is so high, then they bring it up to 83. 
and so we go back and we change it back down to 76 or 78, whatever. So even though it is kind of a nuisance, we do go in there. I, I, could we have a two, two, one meat, smart meat on this side of the house and one on the other side. But I can understand how the older uh, senior citizens that have that, they're not going to be able to do that. So there they are during the July and August in the summer, they have it at 83 because CPS has chosen to change your uh, designation on the computer. And you do it in the computer and that's how they do it. Mm -hmm. but that's, that's also an in invasion of privacy from a lot of data. I think you had a comment, is that correct? Go ahead. Yes, but mm -hmm. I just have one, one thing to say. I, I love this area, not to call that like my, my people to me. But one thing that I see when it rains, now when I, when I was younger and my kids were going to school, I would drive them to school, even though it's closed, because when it rains, it doesn't have enough Rain it's a rain. And, and, and yes. when it rains, I can, I can see people older than me with walkers, mm -hmm. and they have to go through the street because they. We do have. We do have. Uh, in, in some parts, we have a sidewalk, but the sidewalk. Yeah. And, and, and we ask people that were doing sidewalk. And they said, well, that's what's required. That's the minimum. So, I just simple. had a question. I'm a little confused. You're talk you were talking about a smart meter. Is that the thermostat? Yes, that's the thermostat. A new kind of thermostat. No, yeah, OK. From the outside. No, it's inside your house. It's like it's the, the old thermostat that you had that you lower or raise when you wanted colder or hotter. And, but now it's all you know, uh, uh, electronically. You control over it? Yes, you do. Manually, you do. Oh, okay. have control over it. But my question is, okay, I understand that I don't have the smart meter, the thermostat, but I have a programmable one that, you know, was installed. But aren't the outside meters smart, smart meters too? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't know. Yes. Well, they, they, are. they are converting to digital meters outside. Well, I have one. I mean, mine was switched. So that means CPS can control that one? I don't think so. I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't think so because you program it uh, with your computer. You go in and they designate a certain Like they show on the commercial. I mean, I yes. see the commercial. But if you don't have that smart meter, then... If you have the old kinds of thermostat, this lady can tell you because she went back to the old thermostat. Yeah, they have to change my the outside meter and the uh, and inside. The, yeah, because it's radio frequency. They control it by. by it's radio a signal. Frequency. Yeah. So yes. they have yes. a signal where you go. I where you have are. a smart meter outside from a, a, a notice I got. But um, I know that they came and changed. We, to sign up we live outside of San Antonio. Mm -hmm. and they came and they changed all the uh, the meters outside. You should call them and ask them. Yeah. But well. you know what? This is the trend because now even the water meters have been changing. That area where we live, they've come in and, and taken out all the old kinds of meters, mm -hmm. and they have new water meters that uh, people don't. But have. the reason I'm right now, and I really hadn't thought about it, but because I've noticed something has happened. Something is happening with my temperature uh, in the morning. I think it's in the morning. Uh, uh, They're in your house. Seven, but I don't have. Mine is a programmable yeah. thermostat that I control. It's not computer control. And but I've noticed the last. With, I didn't notice it with the AC that much, but I've noticed it with these uh, mornings that I and I've got it. You know, like at at seventy. Um, anyway. But then all of a sudden, it's hot. I mean, at 7 o'clock in the morning when I get up. I mean, that's what happened to us. So when you mention that, I wonder if I'm wrong. Well, I think you need to call. But one other caution about CPS is that when you call, you never get a live person. Oh, and if you sit there and wait and wait and wait, then after waiting 20, 25 minutes, whatever it is, then they say, would you, li would you like for us to call you back? And you need to say yes, because then can I call you back at 11? And they will call you right on the dot at 11. 
So that's good to know. They do. They will call you back. They will call you back. <laughs> and I know that there's yeah. been also some improvement to their customer service. Uh, at least that's what you know. We were told, and the public was told that it was a newspaper article that came out that said they are improving. They're trying to improve their customer service, and that might be one way that even if they can't get to your call right away, that they will get to you in your designated time. Hopefully, you're available to answer the call. Uh, I guess that's the other the other piece. Well, the other thing about uh, CPS, uh, in my apartment where I live, I saw them about a year and a half, two years ago, come change those meters out. And I spoke, spoke to someone about it and said, what's the purpose behind it? Said, well, we want to get it where uh, we can all take a, a scanning device in a general area and, and wave it around like this, and, and it gets... Um, all these meters within a certain distance of that picked up and it, yeah. it's put into a computer where they don't have to uh, go check it. Picks up the signal. Well, that's the that. notice we got. Yep. I, got a, I got a thing hanging on my, on my door that when that meter outside one was replaced, that that's the way it was going to start uh, being read, not by a person, but that we needed to leave accessibility anyway, like my privacy gate has to be, they have, they have to have access Unlocked. to that meter for adjustments and things like that. So yeah, and, and I, I that, already that, that. That's the way it's going in the future. Uh, if you think about 20, 30 years from now, we're not going to have any kind of... Are you joking that? <laughs> so kind of just recapping at some of the comments, and again, where this is by all means, if someone has other comments to make, we are open to write and to hear. Uh, but it sounds like in this general area, if you're in this general area, drainage is absolutely a problem. Access to parks, or where are the parks? Right, so the questions around parks, period. Lighting is other another issue. Um, also, we've heard a lot about the smart meter issue. And really, when you think about smart meters and people will say, well, how does that fall under one of your eight domains? You could probably really look at the affordability of housing because that's a piece of your housing, right? How much you're going to spend on electricity. So we should, you know, we'll, we'll see if uh, we can maybe post some information on our website. And if you don't have a computer, not to worry. <laughs> we will, hopefully we have your information and we can get a hold of you somehow. But we will try to get you information and see if CPS is having more of these outreach into the community where they want to explain what the smart meter is. Because again, we should thank you for your, that information and for the sharing, but maybe others could go to that, that same type of meeting that you attended. If not, you, we could always ask your city rep. Guess what? We met at Tim the Paul. Now we want to come back here. He wants to come back and we want to invite CPS. We want to invite Parks and Recreation. We want them to tell us where the parks are. We want to tell, we want to learn more about smart meters because we've got to hear the information firsthand. That's how we start to work in the community to make some changes. Yes, sir. Uh, I've heard all of this, but uh, I know we need to get AOP to talk to the city. Now, what I think would be helpful is if we could have the city representative or the council person that represents this district to meet with seniors at least once every quarter or once a year or half a year so that we could discuss some of our issues because I mean we're seeing you know a lot of the problems presented here and we know that you're going to go and represent us there but it would be good if they would come and actually meet with us at a local place where they could actually hear it firsthand so if y'all could relate that that would be a good great right. now that's that's a great comment and and I will disclose that he and his office were invited um, he did have a hectic schedule but his office may or may not be online watching us <laughs> Um, but he has expressed an uh, interest, and perhaps that is one of our follow-up meetings that we can have him here. But quite honestly, this conversation really needed to take place without, you know, having the representative, whether it's, you know, Councilman Saldana or Councilman Bernal or, you know, without them in the room so that you can feel free to talk, because some folks won't. Or they'll direct all questions to him, and then we can't talk to you about age friendly. So now we have a framework. That's the beauty of it. We can say we're... Age friendly city, and this is these are some of the issues we came up with where we think we can improve. What district is this? This here, where this particular uh, church is at, is District 4. So, Councilman Ray Saldana. 
Well, because I'm in steps, and you're saying Ray, but I'm That's okay, that's Lopez. Lopez. Yeah. It's Councilman Lopez. And you know, you know the, the lines the aren't, line. you know, as we all know, it's like you could live next door, right? right. <laughs> Hopefully not, and be in a different district. But just so now, we're talking to all of them. So um, it, it just, you know, when you pick us uh, like, a, like a parish, and you're like, okay, it's in your district, but we realize there are people outside of the district as well. And we want to make sure that people understand, you know, San Antonio is already a great place to live. Yeah, but we're looking at ways to improve it even more, you know, for everybody, people of all ages. So, you know, we're not we're not out here trying to, to nitpick and trying to, you know, find out how we can we can, you know, say, hey, councilman, you're not doing your job. You know, we want to be able to improve the city even more and make sure that people can really have a better quality of life. And then in particular around the, the age-friendly framework. Now that it exists, now that the city's part of it, we have another reason to go and talk to councilman, the councilwoman, whoever it is, to tell them this is a real concern and to continue to be age friendly, we need to fix the drainage so we can, we don't have to worry about drowning right after a huge storm. I this would I would suggest that you take this little pamphlet, it's a real short read. Look at it, read it, and, and really think about the eight uh, factors here that they're looking at about, you know, livability in San Antonio. and. Write down your ideas or write down the issues that you have, perhaps in each one of those. And then the next time we get back together again, then you have some very, very uh, concrete things that you would like to uh, uh, to tell us about. Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh. uh, maybe having some more senior centers where we can go and have, you know, exercises and classes that can help us, you know, to grow mentally and physically. Right. That would be great. Well, I heard there's going to be one opening near Ingram. Yeah. Yes, yes. It'd be a real nice one. Yeah. The old Mar vets. <laughs> yes. Old Mar for the shoppers in the room. <laughs> yes. I just want to thank AARP for some of the activity that they're doing for the seniors. I really have enjoyed it. Excellent. You know, in fact, on that note, you know, how many of you all know about the movies for grown-ups that we have, you know, on the community? I Good. You all know about the tech events where Gloria is our star. I'm oh, yeah. talking about the different things that are going on. But you know, there's one more thing, you know, that, that, that you can keep up to date on information that is going on you know, on a regular basis. If you have a cell phone and if you, if you text, how many of you all text? Okay, then what you all can do is, is you can pull out your cell phone right now. Oh, it's on. Yeah, it's what well, it's on the sheet that they gave you. But if you, if you pull out your cell phone now, and I can walk you through it. Okay, I can walk you through it. Okay, everybody, get their cell phones out. If you have a texting plan, because there yeah, are if, rates yeah, that will apply. If you have a texting plan, if you don't have one, a texting plan, then don't do it. Okay. So if you, yeah. So if you on go to the texting thing where you text, is everybody ready on that? Alex. <laughs> it's not online, Alex. <laughs> okay, ready for the texting? If you put in this number, 97779. Seven, That's nine three sevens and another nine. And then on the message that you want to send, that's all. Then for the message, you put add me. You want to be added. So add me, and then hit send, and then you will get a confirmation. And then what will happen is you will be able to get all the information, up-to-date information of the things that are going on in your community here in San Antonio on a regular basis. Okay. The most times is four. Is it four times a month? We can text, we can text you up to five times a month, um, but it's. Sorry, I'm jumping Go in ahead. here real quick, but it, it's a way for us to kind of keep in contact with you guys, letting you know about things that are going on in the community. So I'm signed up for it, you know, just to let, you know, see what we're communicating to our members. And I got a little message reminding me that there was a community conversation happening today. Um, so we like to do it just kind of as reminders or um, sometimes if we have, um, you know, fun things, opportunities, we have a great partnership with the Spurs, a uh, contest going on, so little things like that that we use the text messaging to update you all. Yes, and also on the brochure, which was in your bag, if you didn't get one, we'll hand those out. Um, you have a 1-800, a, a toll-free number, one eight seven seven. 
to get more information as well. If you're not comfortable with the text seat, if you're not comfortable with the computer, there is a number that you could call to get more information about what's going on in your city. And that's fine. That's great. I mean, you know, where's the movie? Where do they have the movies? They have them at the Royal Cinema. We have them at the, Re the Regal? Regal Cinema? We've, we've had them in a few places. The Regal Cinema is the one off of 410 and Ingram. And then we've had one at the Cine Cinema Cinematic, I think it's called, on the south side. We did uh, Military Drive in I-37. Um, we're going to be having, a, the next movies for grown-ups will take place in January. If you're signed for texting, you will get a notice. If you're on the computer, you'll get a notice. If not, call the 1-800 number. It's not on here, but there's a number you can call. And the movie will be uh, will be shown is called Selma. So it's a, it's a great movie. We will be showing that one closer to the south side. And we just sort of rotate uh, where we go. So, yeah, you can, as long as you, you, for the movies, I will tell you, you do want to call in and register. The reason we want you to call in and register is because a lot of people want a free movie, and it's a great time, right? You get a free movie, and if depending on which theater we at, sometimes there's a if you're at a Regal theater, as Gloria said, you get a special on your popcorn and soda because you're an ARP member. Oh, cool! So, uh, but uh, if you're if we're not at a Regal, then sometimes they'll have specials for our members. Sometimes they won't. But Selma is the next movie that we will be showing. And it is a civil rights movie, and it's a great opportunity because it leads up into Martin Luther King and the celebration. That's going to be January 5th, but January 5th is what's coming to my mind right now. But again, the text team will give you that, that date. You can call the number, you can get online. The date and all of the information will be on there, probably coming within the next couple of weeks. Nicole, where should we have the Selma stuff up on the website? Um, the Selma stuff will probably be up on the website probably in the next couple weeks. Um, so if you go to the aarp.org slash San Antonio, you can check. Um, there's a calendar of events that we have coming up. Um, hold on, like, sorry, I'm going to grab this real quick. So this lists some of the events that we have through the end of the year. But we constantly have our website being updated. Um, we're going to be sending another one out for events in January, February, and March at the beginning of the year. So you can keep an eye out for that if you're an AARP member. But if not, you can go online and we'll always have updates coming of our events. So We really do appreciate your time tonight. Is there any closing remarks? And yes. yes. Uh, one thing I want to suggest in terms of when it comes to opportunity for older people, I think that, that this is something AARP should take up as well, is to develop uh, in regards to uh, <clears throat> the eight domains of livability, uh, four through uh, uh, <clears throat> eight could be applied here by uh, getting uh, organizations and uh, set up to help people assist in getting established in things like freelance work for freelance opportunity and in places that can offer freelance opportunity. Freelance artists, freelance writers. Well, there's a lot of things becoming freelance these days because technology is making it uh, able to happen. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, does AARP, um, which uh, supplement insurance do they kind of want to sponsor? There are several that have come out on TV. Mm -hmm. So AARP is not an insurance company, mm -hmm. but it does sponsor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so the, the, the partner is United Healthcare. Yeah. And in your bag, there's a card. There's an ARP card. Did you see that? It's a, it's a card with helpful numbers. And on there is one our, our toll-free number that you can call ARP, and they can connect you to someone to speak about that particular room. Out, out here in, the, in the, the trenches, as we like to call them, we, we're not really, we don't, we can't, <laughs> like, really cross-sell products and services, but we can just let you know. Since you've asked that you can call that number, they'll give you more information. They can get you to somebody that knows a lot yeah, more. Yeah, because I'm from Marco about ARP and United uh, Healthcare. 
and I'm already in that, but I wanted to know if it's different. Or, you know, right. Yeah, you may want to call to see if there's other options, okay. and uh -huh. we always encourage our members to shop around because uh -huh. at the end of the day, it's what's best for you. Yep. So please leave your cards behind. I really hope you pulled them out. We're encouraging you to please leave your card that asks you, what would you do to make San Antonio an even better city? Oh, okay. And does anybody need one? Do you need one there? Over 77 million people will turn 65. That's a very large percentage of us. And we have a lot of work to do, and we're we're very. I, I think we we still have a lot of. Uh, we're very productive and a lot of wisdom, and hopefully, uh, keep ourselves balanced with what we need to do to serve our families, our friends, and our community, and our young people. So. Uh, just keep ourselves healthy. <laughs> yeah. Take our vitamins. Yeah. There's one thing I heard recently about that's also beginning to affect older people, and it's becoming a big problem. And that uh, pe people and uh, nearing retirement or already in retirement that have student loan debt, and they say that this is uh, growing leaps and bounds. Just since the uh, crash of 2008, it's a, uh, it and now uh, the the cost of uh, debts of uh, people in this category has increased fivefold. Yep, that is an issue. Yes, ma'am. It's what we were concerned with is on on all the sheets. Do we still have to? Well, I mean, this is your personal. If uh, you would like to get your card. Uh, the more cards you have, the better, because when we're speaking with the representative, we can say, you know, it's better to hold a stack of 15, 20 <laughs> than it is to hold two, right? Because then they'll think we wrote them. <laughs> Joe and Lisa did it. <laughs> but see, this is, like, it's just really thoughtful, right? There's a variety of examples, and it's just helpful. So we'll be picking these up, myself, Gloria, and so, I know Joe just picked two up, so, um, again, we'll be collecting them. Does anybody have any other questions or concerns or something else they might want to say? Any questions? 